Hi, everybody. Okay, today's lesson, we are talking about linear and nonlinear functions. Going back to our overall uh, purpose is so that we can interpret the parameters of a linear function. Um, and so what we're looking at here really is the function linear. Is it nonlinear? Is it continuous? Or is it discrete? discuss the context of the question. So, Beta drives, drove to work at 45 miles per hour. She pulled over at a gas station to look for her purse. She then raced home at 60 miles per hour to find her purse. Graph her distance from home over time. So, if I were, generally when we create a distance time graph, time usually is the independent variable, and so it would go on the x-axis. Whatever is your independent generally goes on the x-axis, where my distance would be. So the more time I give, the farther I can travel, right? If I have an hour to drive, then I can drive for 60 miles. If I have two hours to drive, I can drive for 120. So really, x is the independent, the dependent is the distance. So we're talking dot time and distance from home. So time would go on the x-axis, and distance from home, our depender, would go on the y-axis. So what would this point right here represent? What does this point, i got to change my colors right now, what does this point right here represent? Go, Gracie. You spent zero amount of time driving zero miles from home. So where am I at that at point? Home. I'm at home. So if I were here, am I at home? No. No, I'm away from home. But no time. I'm starting away from home. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. So what would it sh what would it what do you think it would look like if it said I was driving to work at 45 miles per hour? What would that line look like? Would it be a line? Remember, distance equals rate times time. So tell me, would it be? What would it look like? Anybody have any idea? Go, Elise. Um, I thought I was going to say. We'll try. What do you think it would look like on the graph? Would it be dots or would it be a line? I think it would be uh, dots because it would. Okay, it'll be a line, but not because it's distance. It's actually because of the time, because as time is continuing every second, I'm not taking a piece of the time like every hour I'm moving. I'm moving continuously. So it is going to be a line. And so let's just make a line, and we're just going to make a steady line at 45 miles per hour. Okay, but then she, she pulls over at a gas station to look for her purse. What now is going to happen to this? What now is going to happen to this? Grant, Mike. Right, she's looking for her purse, but what's the line going to look like on the graph? It's going to move to the right? Okay, can you just can you be a little clearer on that? Yes. Yeah, and so what's the line going to look like? A line to the right. Can we have another word? What? A horizontal line. So now we're going to go horizontally because time is increasing, but distance is not. Now, she then races home at 60 miles per hour to find her purse. She originally went, this is 45 miles per hour. This is stopped. What is 60 miles per hour going to look like? It's at a steeper angle. At a steeper angle, and which way is she going? Up. Down, up. up. She's going up at a steeper angle. She's racing home at 60 miles per hour. That is correct. She's going down because distance she's going back to. So this is going to have to be a steeper angle, right, at 60 miles per hour. Because remember, her last line really is her 
We said this is 45 MPH. This is stopped. And this is 60 miles per hour. So what this really represents, what? She's going. No, that's point. Just that point. The distance oh. she traveled. Where is she? Home. She's at home and lots of time has passed. Right? We don't know how much time, but lots of time has passed and she's back home. She's at home. Yes, question. But isn't the home at the corner over there? Nope. Home, if this were a number line, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. Okay, she's still at the zero mark. The only thing that's increased is time. Uh, Her distance is not at one. Do you understand? So it's not just that point that's Yes, that right. Any, anywhere on that line would represent her being at home. That's right. All right, so this is what we would call a continuous line. It's a continuous line. Um, as opposed to the one thing I want you to think of when it's continuous, it's constant. You, every, every minute is being graphed. Does that make sense? Every second is being graphed, whether she's stopped or moving. Okay. Martha will put a, qu a quarter in her piggy bank every day starting on Monday, except on weekends. Graph her total savings over the first 10 days. Okay. We have two unknowns here. What are they? What goes on my x-axis? What goes on my y-axis? Two unknowns. Elise? Uh, I think one of the unknowns would be how much is in a piggy bank. Uh, so the savings. We call that savings. And then the other unknown would be? The other unknown would be how much time has passed. Which and time is in what? Which would be time is in what? In days. Days. It says days. So what is the depender? What is the depender? State the depender. I want to hear from other people. How about Brienne? Is the depender the y? Person? Right, but what would be the depender in this story? Um, it is it savings or days? Days. Days depends on savings or savings depends on days? What do you think, Max? The savings depend on the days. That's correct. If I, if I have two days, I'm going to save 50 cents. If I have 10 days, I'm saving $2.50. So if, day, if days, if the savings is the depender, that goes on the y-axis. And what would go on the x-axis? Your days. And remember I said last time, time generally is seen on the x-axis. It is generally the independent. Does that make sense? Just to be safe, ask yourself, put yourself in the situation, what depends on the other? In this case, we had days and we had savings. So days goes on the x-axis, days is the independent, and savings is the depender. Now, if I plot on day one, on day zero, I have nothing, right? So I'm going to just start there. And then on day one, how much will I have? 25 cents on day two, day three, 75, day four, day five, day six. Oh, wait a second, but it says, except on weekends. So this is, let's talk about, this is, this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Where's my next one going to be? 125. To the right. It's going to stay to the right. And then Sunday? Stay to the right. Okay. And then Monday. So that's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where will the next one go? 150. 150 for day seven. And what would I do for, gosh, what would I do for day eight? And day nine. Two dollars. And day ten. That was day ten. Oh. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So. Okay. So questions here. Two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so my question to you is would I connect these points? No. Other people, thoughts, questions? No. Why? Give me a why. Give me a why. Jamie. You're only getting the 25 cents every time a day goes by. You're not getting uh, like half a penny every 30 seconds. So we would not connect the dots because I'm not going to put in 38 cents. I'm only putting in a quarter one time a day. There's no data in between. And that's why we don't connect the dots. And do you guys remember the name of this kind of line? Discrete. It's called a discrete line. As opposed to, as opposed to a um, continuous. Okay? Discrete lines versus continuous. Okay. Car's fuel tank is filling at a rate of 1.6 gallons per minute. The tank held 5 gallons of gas before refueling. So what's my starting amount? Uh, 5 gallons. 5. And I'm adding what? 1.6x. 1.6x. What does x stand for? Per minute, and what do you think the Y stands for? Um, how much gas in total? Right, so Y is my volume of gas, and, oops, didn't mean to do that, and X is my minutes, okay? So if I made a table, what is the depender? Um, volume of gas, Y, Y. What becomes our Y, guys? The gas or the minutes? How much gas? Gas. gas because, so the volume is dependent on the minutes. Okay, so we could create a table with this, right? Mm -hmm. They're using M and V, which I probably should have used. There's our equation. And I could create a table. And I'm going to just fill some values in. So for 0, we end up with 5. For 2, we end up with 8 and 2 tenths, 11. Now, as I go to graph it, remember volume is on the y-axis, minutes are in the, on the x-axis. I want to know, as I plot this, do you think it will be discrete or continuous? Continuous. Raise your hand if you think it would be discrete. Raise your hand if you think it would be continuous. Okay, somebody else, I want to hear from somebody else. Why do you feel like it would be continuous? Chloe. Because it's not like every um, minute you're putting in a little gas. It's like it's continually going. As every second exactly. time, you are utilizing every second of the domain. So, yes, you would draw the line. It would be continuous. Okay, you guys get the idea? All right, we're going to skip through this. The other big thing is... Um, to determine whether something is linear or nonlinear in this section. We've kind of already discussed. Okay, so a linear equation, the one big clue is x is to the first power. x is to the first power, and it may not be in the denominator. So in this case, y equals 3x is linear. But y equals 3x squared is not linear. Anything x squared creates a what's called a parabola, that shape. Okay. Y equals X over 2 minus 1. Remember, that's the same thing as Y equals 1 half. X can drop to the middle minus 1. X is to the first power, so it is a linear equation. Whereas X to the fourth power is not linear. Y equals 6X plus 5. X is to the first power, so it is linear. The square root of x is not linear. Okay. C equals pi times diameter. We have a constant rate of change. D is to the first power. So it's almost like perimeter for a circle. It's linear, but is area of a circle linear? No. Why? Because R is squared. My independent variable is squared. Perimeter of a square is linear, 
but what about uh, side squared? Is that linear area? No, because this S is squared. Um, X plus Y is linear, but X minus X times Y is not linear because if I got Y alone, right, divide both sides by X, you'd end up with Y equals 7 over X. And when it's in the denominator, it makes this funny look, look in picture like this. Okay, it's not linear. So, let's look at a couple of, um, which of the following equations represent a linear function? Does y equal 3.8, would that be linear? I heard a yes up front. Can you explain to me what that would look like? y equals 3.8, one variable. What's that going to look like on the coordinate plane? Yes. Y equals 3.8 is a horizontal line. It's a horizontal line. Yes, it's a line. It's a linear function. Okay, Y equals the square root of X. No. I, I believe it looks like uh, something like this. Okay. Um, y equals 3 to the X power. No. No. Um, y equals 2 over x. No, we know that makes that kind of curved on two parts of it. Y equals 6x minus 1. If we simplify it, x is still to the first power. And x squared minus y equals 0. No. Not linear. Good. Um, pretty easy here, guys. What does it mean to be a linear function? What, what, what does it look like? A line. So, is A a linear function? No. No, because it doesn't look like a line. <laughs> okay? Um, B. Yes. Why? Because it looks like a line. Okay? Um, letter A. Shh. Letter A. Linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear. B? Linear. Linear. All right. When we look at a table... Okay, one way to tell if it's linear is if it has a constant rate of change. That would mean a constant rate of your change in your y over your change in your x. If it's a constant rate of change, this is my x, what is it changing at every time? It increases by 3, right? Oh, yes, yes. Right? That's increasing by 3, so that would be over 3. And this has increasing by what? Decreasing by 6, decreasing by 6, decreasing by 6, I get negative 6. And actually, guess what that equals? Our, it equals our slope. So negative 2. So if it has a constant rate of change in both the x and the y areas, it would be linear. What about b? Is b linear? Why? Because... The x has the same rate of change, which is adding 2 every time, but the y has a different rate of change. Which is? Well, 2 plus 7 is 9, but 9 plus 11 is 20, and 20 plus 15 is 35. So does that make sense? No. The y does not have a constant uh, rate of change, and so it is not linear. All right, pause the recording, and I want you to tell me if the next two are. If you were to do this on a test or for something from me, you're going to want to show me that it has a constant rate of change, not just write yes or no. You're going to want to show me and then say the reason why. So, letter A. How about Julia? It is a linear uh, function. Why? It is a linear function. I'm adding 9. To the y's and x's, good. Yep, okay. So it's a linear function because it has a constant rate of change. Uh, B, how about Nicole? It's nonlinear. Nonlinear. The numerator or the x's are, have a... They're adding by 2. Adding by 2, but the... 
y's. Adding 26, right? Yeah. And then this is... 90 something. 98. Yeah. Okay, so it is nonlinear because it's not a constant rate of change. All right, which of the co following equations represent a linear function? Does y equals 2 to the x? You know what? Let's move on to this last problem. Okay, the last kind of problem you have is they give you... Um, uh, a word problem. A cereal bar contains 130 calories. The number of C calories consumed is a function of the number B bars eaten. So is there a relationship? Yes. Is one dependent on the other? Yes. What's de the depender? Calories are dependent on how many bars are eaten. Right. So does this set sentence, let's see, let's make a table. Does it, does it represent a linear function? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because for one bar it's 130. For two bars it's 260 for three bars, right. So, um, when it says B, it says A, as B increases by one, C increases by 130, the rate of change is constant. So it is. Then it goes to B, find the domain of the function. What is X allowed to be? What is B allowed to be? Right. Does it have to be one? No. Can I eat half a bar? So what would we say? B is greater than zero. Right. B is greater than zero. Because we don't have to eat a full bar. I could eat half a bar. Right? And would it be continuous? Could I be eating part of the bar the whole way through? Right. I could keep eating part of it, all of it, three quarters of it. So it would be continuous, and B is greater than zero. That is the domain. And I, we didn't answer that at first. So one thing I want you to look at this book, and this is how your SBAC testing is going to be, is notice it says find the domain of the function, and is the domain discrete or continuous? So you have three parts to that question. Just part B. The domain is B, great, B is greater than zero. It's continuous because I could eat part or three quarters of the bar. Do you understand how you have three parts to just be? And then it says graph the function using its domain. So in order to do that, we'd have to make a table, right? For zero bars, I have zero. For one, it's 130. For two, it's 260. For three, it's 390. For four, and then we graph it with calories being on the y-axis because that's the depender. And, and bars being on the x-axis. And since I can eat part of a bar, are we connecting the dots? Yes. yes. So do you understand how to do that kind of a word problem? Yep. I think they just did a little bit more of it. Make the input out. There we go. I just made it bigger. And it says draw the line through because we can, the arrow indicates that we can eat part of a bar half a bar, quarter of a bar, and um, that's about it. This is, here's one, it says write a real life problem that fits the data in the graph. Is the domain of each function discrete or continuous? Number one, is A discrete or continuous? It's discrete. B discrete or continuous? continuous? Can anybody think of a, of a real life situation for this data? You take some of you one dollar of your own money and put it in a bank to save, and A shows how how much spending money you have. But you're starting at six. Yeah. So how does that go? Think about that. All right, that's the end of it. If you want to think of a real life one, this could be. So here's an example. Two. People building, bidding on each other on six coins at an auction. All right, that's it.